Welcome to your first look at Identity Player Housing. This here is an apartment in Ash Hill. Uh, it's still not quite complete. We have a little more work left to do on interface and such, but even as it is, it's the most complete player housing I've ever seen in an MMO. This inside is a two bedroom apartment, which means it can house two people, the owner and a friend. It starts off a little bit basic with uh, you know, low level trims on the walls and such, and uh, laminate flooring. All this can get upgraded. Almost everything is interactive, like this TV that we turned on, streaming YouTube videos. Oh my god, what the f happened? All right, do me a favor. Call FSA Chevis or something. He's in the beginning of the list and tell him that ASDFZ needs that help we were talking about, all right? Do and like that, uh, this radio streams live internet radio stations. Uh, let me just turn this down a little so you can hear me. There we go, much better. Now, like I said, everything in here can be modified and upgraded. Almost every component, even the window trim, the window itself, your ceiling, all of the floors, uh, your furniture is fixed, countertops, appliances, cabinets. Just about everything you can see can be swapped out. So, let's get started here. I'll show you how it works on walls. First, we choose a covering. Wallpaper, uh, let's go some simple paint and we can choose what we want this paint to look like any color there is go with a little green i'm not interior decorator i don't know what i'm doing here and we choose a trim now these trims all have to be acquired you have to buy these out in the world these are the few options i have some crown molding and we can apply it just this wall the whole room or the entire apartment there it is applied all the way throughout Let's change the flooring here, get rid of this laminate. Uh, I, I like dark hardwoods myself, walnut. And that's throughout the whole apartment. Now the kitchen needs something a little different though, so we can change just that room alone. Put those tiles back in. There we go. And let's get rid of this popcorn ceiling. It's a little outdated. Paint that white and put it all throughout. Now it's starting to look a little bit better already. It's time to put some furniture in here. See, we have a sofa, leather sofa. I have mostly traditional kind of furniture selected here. It's the kind of thing I like, but there's all kinds of different styles available for you. Now, almost every one of these items are crafted and customized. That sofa that you see there, it could be made in leather, different colors of leather, fabric, all sorts of different ways. And it's up to the designer. And this is a, a bookshelf is sort of a special container. So it can hold items like other things, but really it only holds books. And what's cool is when you put books in there, they're actually visible right on there. And this, now notice how this can't be placed anywhere except near that power receptacle. Now let's just uh, fill in a little more furniture. Dining area over here will make it look a little more complete. So we have dining tables. And that's going to need a chair too. Now, like I said, most of this is crafted and customized by people. So when you order something, if it's online and not in a store, you have to have it delivered to your house. That means a transportation corporation or someone with the right job will actually bring it to your address and deliver it right into your house. If you have the right vehicle, you can do it yourself. Now this this lighting, light attached to a certain socket, like this. There's a special item, you can only go in a certain spot, and they'll change the look of the whole area. And uh, oh, now we can turn this on too, because it's connected to the wall. So if someone's delivering it, you can use your peephole to see who's there. And make sure that they're not someone that you uh, want to keep out of your apartment. Let's go down to this bedroom over here. Now it looks like this bedroom needs a bed. Let's toss one in here quickly. You can actually lie down on this bed too. There, that's much better. Now here's your closet. Your closet works as sort of a bank for your clothing. So you never really lose clothing once you bought it. It will always be available here if you want to come back to your home and change it out. 
Let's give this place a little bit more of a comfy bedroom look. Some Berber carpet, only in this room. And we'll change the walls to, let's say, some wallpaper and some different trim on top. And just this room. And there we go. This looks much better. A lot more comfy now. And like I said, almost everything's interactive. So when we use this canvas, we can actually paint on it. Now, I am not an artist. When you paint on these canvas, you can do all sorts of things with it. First of all, you can just keep it for yourself. You can hang it on your wall. You can add a frame to it. Or you could sell it. You could sell it on the market. And if you think you're really good, you can submit it to an art gallery. Anyone off the street can just walk in, see your art, and buy it right there out of the gallery. I am probably not quite good enough for that. As you can see right here with my art skills, I'll just uh, see, make a little man here. He's happy. I just need some arms, a little bit, of, a little bit of hair. There we go. There, perfect. That's a masterpiece right there. So if I hold down my action key, I can choose to take it away. And now it's actually an item in my furniture inventory. Now, art like this too uh, can be reproduced. You can have prints done, but the original will always be shown as the original piece. So it's probably going to be a little bit more value for good. All right. Perfect. That is beautiful. Another important thing over here is your computer. And computers are quite a bit like the smartphone you have in game, but it can do a few more things. You can uh, watch live streams. You can play games that are made just for the in-game computer. There's a functional internet that is embedded right into the game. And if you are too poor for a computer of your own, you can always go to an internet cafe. And that covers the features as they stand right now for the apartment. We're always expanding on it, adding new things, adding more pieces of furniture to choose between, more customization options. The same level of detail, we're taking it further. Not only in apartments, but you'll see this kind of fidelity in weapons, vehicles, the policing system, prisons, everything under the sun. If you want to get involved with Identity's development or just get into the game as soon as possible, visit our website listed here. Identity is an MMORPG that is not really like any of the others you've probably played before. We're not about leveling and questing and grinding up to be able to play with your friends at a higher level. Everything is about the people and the interactions between them. Because of this, it's actually the people who play all of the different roles in the game aside from some really minor things like shops and whatnot. You could become a businessman for example, or you could be a criminal and try and get that fortune just a little bit faster. You could become a policeman and or paramedic, a, a firefighter, the list goes on. In each of these careers, there's a totally separate progression path where you can grow your way through the ranks and unlock new abilities and move your way up. In addition to that, there's even player government where you, the people, are actually going to be able to elect other players into office who can set laws and control taxes and even make their own policies. And fun's really always the main focus here too. We're going to make sure that whatever you're doing is going to be fun and you're going to enjoy doing it. But with that said, we're keeping some things not so much on the traditional arcadey role of MMOs but going more a little realistic when it comes to weapons, health, and vehicles. That is, vehicles are going to handle like real vehicles, they're going to crash like real vehicles, weapons are going to shoot like the real counterpart in real life. We also understand that you're not always going to want to do something intensive like trying to make money or fight other gangs. So we give a lot that you can do in your downtime too. Fun little social things that don't really need to be done, but you know, why not? There's something fun. Text communication exists, but we've sort of downplayed it a bit compared to most other MMOs. 
Instead, we're going for a voice over IP, which means when you speak into your microphone, your voice is going to be coming out of your character, and your character's mouth will move and everything accordingly. With this, we actually created karaoke bars, where you can go and sing and just have a fun time with friends. And if karaoke is not really your thing, we have other fun stuff like cinemas. The cinemas are actually playing real movies. You can walk in, sit down with friends, and watch an actual movie play start to end. We even have musical instruments that you can actually play note by note however you like. You can write your own songs, play anything you want. And to make that even better, we have places to play them, concert halls that amplify the music that you're playing on stage so all your friends can see and watch. You'll even find libraries full of player written books and art galleries that are displaying art pieces that other people have actually drawn in the game and are for sale in the gallery. If you're looking for something a little more action oriented but you don't have a lot of time to get into the game, there's fun little mini games such as paintball that you can play with your friends. The economy and identity is actually really quite interesting and the main reason that is is that the majority of the items that are for sale on an NPC store are actually made by players. For example, take a t-shirt. If you wanted to actually create a t-shirt, you not only choose the fabric that's made out of the colors, you can even put symbols on it. And when that is sold in a store, whoever buys it is going to have that exact piece that you made. What makes this even more interesting is that these items sold in the stores are priced based on supply and demand. So if there's a lot of t-shirts of a certain kind for sale in this one particular store, the price is going to be pretty cheap relative to another store that doesn't have any. Because of this, delivery missions can come into play and you can actually make money transporting goods from point A to point B and selling them again. We'll even have apps that you can use on your in-game smartphone or your in-game computer to monitor the prices of certain commodities at any time. If you're really into the business side of things though, the next step up would probably be real estate. Now, you can buy real estate in the world. Every house that you see in the world is available for purchase. And if you're to buy that, you can use it for yourself or you can even set it up for rent. Any house that you have that's rented by another player is going to be producing income all the time. And the next step up from there even is factory ownership. There are two kinds of homes in identity. You have apartments and houses. Apartments are instants, meaning that anybody can have them. There's an unlimited number of them available. When you interact with a certain apartment building, you're going to be able to load into your instance department. Houses, on the other hand, are out in the world. And like I said earlier, every single house out in the world is viable and rentable. And when you have one of these houses, it's unique. Only one person can own a certain house on that server in the world at any given time. When you first buy your home, it's going to come both empty and sort of shabby. So you're going to be able to upgrade things like your floors, your walls, your trims. If you want to like redo the floors with nice hardwood, that's up to you. You can even choose the style and the color. And then it's time to buy furniture and move it all in. The cool thing here is that a lot of the furniture that you place in your home is functional. It's not just for decoration, although some is. For example, a sofa or a chair can be sat in. Uh, television, you can actually watch streaming gameplay of other people playing Identity at any given time. If you have a radio, you can turn that on, listen to streaming radio, real internet radio stations. Closets can be used to store any sort of clothing that you bought earlier and are not using at that given time. You can take out food out of a refrigerator or your cupboards, for example, or even use your bed to rest. The list goes on and on, and the point is that a lot of this stuff that you have in your house isn't just for decoration, it's for actual use. A lot of stuff is just for decoration though, and we have some really cool things here. For example, if you take a screenshot with your smartphone in the game, you can actually print that off, frame it, and hang it on your wall. Whatever you take, that thing will show on the wall to everybody in your apartment. And we go even further with this, allowing you to get canvases where you can paint by hand anything that you can imagine. You'll see this masterpiece right here, I made myself. It's probably going to be worth a fortune one day. Homes have a lot of other functionality too. Uh, one of the main things that you're probably going to use it for is storage. Any items that you have out in the world, you can store in your house for safekeeping. Character customization is going to be very extensive. With such a huge focus on immersion and world, we have to go just as far with characters as well. That means that there's going to be a lot of focus on character customization to make sure that you can look truly unique in exactly how you'd like to appear. And because there's no skills, there's no leveling, when you get in the game you can play with your friends no matter how long they've been playing before you. You can just jump right in and get right into it right off the bat. 
In place of skills and levels, we have something like a talent tree that you would see in other MMORPGs, although it's structured a little bit differently. We'll give you more information on that at a later time. But one thing that we can say about it is, in addition to your generic talent trees, careers also have their own progression. Things that you can do to make some money in the world, and anybody can do them at any given time. Things like mining, transportation, shipwreck excavation, hunting and fishing, and so on. There's even illegal things that you could do, such as robbery, you could kidnap other people, you can produce drugs, you can do smuggling or arms dealing. Now, careers, on the other hand, you have to apply to and join. These are things like police, paramedics, and firefighters, and there's even more. These all have their own progression. For example, in police, you can become a detective. You can become a DEA agent or a SWAT member. All of the police that you encounter in a game when you're a criminal are going to be played by other people who are working up the ranks to be the best cop that they can be. That means it's going to be their focus to stop you when you're doing something illegal. If you're interested in becoming a police officer, you're also going to get all kinds of extra powers and abilities and even weaponry that other people don't have. For example, you're going to be able to arrest other players who are breaking the law. You can tase them if you have to subdue them without killing them. You even have your own special vehicles with police radar, sirens, searchlights, and the list goes on. The police force will be a very organized structure that you can be a member of. While there's a whole slew of things that you can do that are non-combat related, player versus player combat is always an important thing of great MMOs and identity is no exception here. Where we are different is in how we do it. Members of gangs can declare war on other gangs and if they accept, open war can begin where you can kill these other people at any given time. There are also PvP capture points such as cartels that work sort of like something that you would expect in a game like Battlefield where you capture a certain area and then gain benefits from holding it. In the case of a cartel, for example, you'll get a cut of the drugs that are produced there. Identity is a huge game with a lot to do, and we've only just gotten started in this development. We're going to be releasing new screenshots, information, and videos on a very regular basis to all of our backers. If only a few people have taken it this far in a couple of short months, imagine where we're going to be in a year with your support. I'm veteran game developer John Vanderswet, and I'm excited to show you today what we've been working on for the last few months in absolute secrecy. Identity is an MMORPG that's unlike any other you've ever played. It's not based on levels or skill progression, it's based on you, your character, and what you want to do with it. Identity is all about giving absolute freedom in a world that's full of other people and fun things to do. We've gotten rid of most of the AI and replaced it with people. It's people who are driving down the street, and it's people who run for governor. It's people who play as police officers and fight crime. You'll find sports, car racing, paintball matches, and more others than I have time to list. And if living off the land is your sort of thing, you can make a pretty good living hunting or fishing. Identity is all about the freedom to do what you want to do, when you want to do it. While Identity is an MMORPG in most ways, we're going to be offering you the option to rent your own servers too. So if you want a different, more specialized style of gameplay than our official servers have, such as maybe hardcore role-playing or some kind of like endless action, server operators are going to have control over hundreds of features to customize what they want. Alright, you're Watertown. That suspect's in custody. Nobody is coming to the perimeter. It's still a hot speed. If you're somebody that likes to take the quiet route, you can form a business and play the market. Or you can take the other way, you could become a criminal, you could rob people, you could rob banks, you could steal cars. Everything is open for player interaction. The land identity is enormous with all sorts of landscapes from cities, farms, and wilderness. There really is so much more I wish I could show you with this, but we've only just gotten started here. You need a shank? 